Well, hello and welcome back, everybody. My name is Nathan Eckel. With me is Tim Nelson, and we're talking about this great book that we found. Actually, we've been aware with it uh, of it for some time. Feel the fear and do it anyway. This is the unofficial guide, and with me is my good friend, Dr. Tim Nelson. How are you doing today, Tim? I'm doing great today, Nathan. How are you doing? I am doing just peachy. I think we're actually on Chapter 3, but we're supposed to be on Chapter 2. So let's. Oh, I think that's probably chapter right. Let's get that it right over. Yeah, let's cue us up here, Tim, and, and we'll <laughs> go there. Uh, the last uh, session, we talked about locus of control a little bit. We did in the 48 days curriculum, and uh, we also talked about the three levels of fear in chapter one, and I think here in chapter two, we're going to talk about uh, uh, five questions that you have to ask, and I'll, I'll hand that right back over to you, Tim. Okay, thanks, Nathan. Right, here in chapter two, we're dealing with five basic truths um, that are presented in the book about um, fear and our apprehensions, and sometimes we don't even think of them as fears, but just things that pull us back. The first one of these is the fear will never go away as long as I continue to grow. We're afraid. Are we afraid that fear is going to go away? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're wanting fear to go away and we fear that it won't go away. And I think, I think the truth here is that we need to recognize our fears, understand it's there, and it might be there for a long time, but we can still still be working through it as long as we continue to grow and move ahead. Secondly, uh, the second truth is the only way to get rid of fear of doing something is to go out and do it. And a lot of people say, oh, well, I just can't do that. I just can't do that. I just you know, and, and come up with a whole list of excuses. And I think we talked before in another webinar about the the fact that when you start making up excuses, you start making up stories about yourself that aren't even true, and they're fiction. And we start talking ourselves into these uh, stories that don't even make any sense. So if we just stop those stories and think about getting rid of fear just by doing it, and uh, suddenly the fear of doing it is gone and we're doing it and while we're doing it we're not thinking about afraid of it nathan what are you thinking about yeah exactly tim i i just wanted to kind of make a quick little comment um it seems like so many of us we we can be wired primarily in one of three ways we can have kind of a kinetic or action orientation we can have a more emotional or feeling orientation in terms of our personality, or some of us have a very cognitive or thinking orientation. And so for people that uh, are like, I think the two of us are more cognitive feelers and we're feeling the fear or we're thinking about things too deeply, this point is so important because she's saying, go out there, pretend you're action oriented, you know, fire, ready, aim, and just go out and do it, and you'll find that you break out of the fear by just doing. And I think that, that many of us, if we feel too much or if we think too much, we can benefit by taking a cue from the people that just go out there and do it. That's excellent, Nathan. I'm really glad you chimed in and, and contributed that because we all do approach things from different directions. And I agree with, agree with you. We are kind of cognitive thinkers. Uh, uh, feelers, con cognitive feelers, like you suggested, and uh, yeah, really great ideas there. Another truth about fear, the only way to feel better about myself is to go out and do it. We were just talking about that. Uh, just the past couple of weeks as I've been reading this book, I'm thinking, well, you know, you could just do that and then you wouldn't be thinking about it, thinking about having to do it. And sometimes the things <laughs> that get in our way are things that only take two or three minutes or, you know, we're stalling or we're procrastinating mm -hmm. or, oh, you know, I don't want to go sweep out the garage. It's cold out and rainy. Well, if you just go out and do it, 
then you won't have to be thinking about how cold and rainy it is. You come back in the house, you'll be warm, and you'll feel fine. And so even little things like this um, can make a difference in addition to the big things that we deal with. Um, whether they're things dealing with our current job and our workplace, or if they're things about, uh, if we're thinking about career change and what might happen in our whole wheel of, or in our whole sphere of existence, not just in our job, but how that would affect our family lives, our finances, um, all sorts of things in our lives. Uh, I think we're always going to be better if we, th if we're thinking about something and we're apprehensive about it to just, you know, stick our foot in the water or just jump in the water, whatever the case may be, to get started thinking about it. And so I hear what she's saying here. You know, a lot of people say, just do it. And that's really easy for some people to do. And those who are the thinking, feeling people, mm -hmm. um, you know, might have a little more trouble with that. So... The last one, not only am I going to experience fear whenever I'm on familiar territory, unfamiliar territory, but so is everyone else. Well, if I'm mm -hmm. fearful, you know, sometimes you can walk in the room and you can tell if, if, if there's someone up in the front of the room who's about to speak and it's their first time to speak, you can kind of sense that they're nervous or it's their first mm -hmm. time. And uh, it can make everybody else in the room a little bit uneasy. But if we go, um, and that's just a fact, but the more we experience fear and the more we um, uh, embrace it and face it and work through it, uh, the more comfortable we'll be with ourselves. And as a result, the people around us will be a little bit more comfortable with that too. We can still admit that we're afraid of it, but we can also say, well, I'm just going to do it anyway. And like she says, find the feel, fear and do it anyway. And I think it's a wonderful idea that she's got going there for us in this chapter. Absolutely. Well, great. Uh, you know, Tim, what, what other content do we have here? We've got one more here. Pushing through fear is less frightening mm -hmm. than living with underlying fear that comes from a feeling of helplessness. Wow, that's huge. Um, yeah. You know, the feeling of helplessness, that's when things are really powerful. That's not just about going out to sweep the garage in bad weather. That's about life change. That's about um, mm -hmm. getting ourselves up off the couch and doing something about our lives. And the fact that we t do take hold of ourselves and we do make a plan for moving ahead is going to help us overcome a feeling of helplessness. And the feeling of helplessness is pretty awful. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, well, that's, that's basically sitting in the back of the bus, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's it. That feeling of helplessness. Oh, yeah, you're going to school whether you want to or not. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what the school bus is all about. So <laughs> one of the ways that we can move ahead with these fears is to retrain ourselves. And this is kind of hard, but you can go ahead and do it. And by repeating these fear truths 10 times a day for a month. Now, I think if you t repeat them 10 times a day for a few days, they're going to start to sink in. And if you do it for a month or three weeks, it's really going to start to sink in. Sink in, And, our, you know, your life can change really pretty quickly. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing she's presented with us with here and wonderful ideas for people interested in career change and, and moving ahead. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Tim. And, and I, I would beg to differ with you. I don't think it's all that hard to say those truths 10 times a day. For, for someone that's in the back of the school bus and feeling helpless and being driven around by life in places that are stressful, difficult, maybe embarrassing, you know, what, insert adjective there, uh, saying these truths a few times a day is a, a simple way to get your mind and your subconscious even activated in the right direction. I go along with you on that, yeah.
All right, I've won you over. It's not hard, folks. We want to put you from the back seat into the driver's seat, and we will see you on Chapter 3 coming right up. Thanks so much, Tim, and thank you for tuning in. Take care, everyone.